Wow. It's a pretty big one. This is a big one. <laughs> we have got a world champion sat in front of us. That is a serious statement. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jensen Button. Woohoo! Thank you very much. That was a round of applause. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, the lot. World champion. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, it's an unbelievable thing to be able to say. Yeah, it's, um, it's a big moment for us to be sat opposite someone like yourself. I Just to say, I grew up as a kid watching you and my dad. So oh, really? to now, Yeah. So to now be sat here across the table from you is pretty weird. It's funny, actually, when I, if somebody notices me, notices me in the paddock, normally it's, oh, by the way, my dad is a big fan of yours. <laughs> it's like, now, now I feel really old. Yeah. Well, I'm 26 and I was probably like at 10, 10 years old and I used to watch you on the TV. Okay, cool. So yeah, it's kind of a weird scenario, but I'm just rolling <laughs> with it right now. But how are you, man? Good? I'm good, thank you. It's, uh, it's been a busy, it always is really busy leading up to the British Grand Prix. Um, mostly just for the drivers but for me I, I i make sure that this is a busy time for me because i'm not in the uk very often so do you live I in monaco of, no i live in uh, la oh, oh wow. wow yeah I so love this LA. is, this is a long cool. way from home <laughs> yeah um but uh, so i've been at goodwood for four days driving fast cars yeah we stuff. saw you you walked past us and we were going to come over but we were like no he's busy yeah you're in your race mean, like who what <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you do <laughs> uh, but now i know um, but uh, yeah, I was there for four days, and yes, I was at Wimbledon, which was quite fun with yeah. Rolex, which is lovely. Nice. And uh, I hope they uh, sorted you out a nice watch, right? Yeah, they yeah. did actually. <laughs> so, what? Yeah, what are we doing wrong here? We're missing out. <laughs> I'm actually wearing my. This is this. I bought this in 2000. So, oh wow! I sorted this out for myself. So it's 22 years old. It's my gift to me when I got into Formula One. It's wow. funny, we, we said this to ourselves like two days ago, we're like as soon as pit stops like really making, we're gonna just go out and buy ourselves a couple of Rolexes. <laughs> Get some Rolexes, <laughs> That's buddy. where we're gonna spend the money. Apparently they, they don't go down in value, so. No, yeah. it seems that the moment you can buy one, that's the thing, you just can't buy anything at the moment. No. Any luxury goods you cannot buy. Um, even if you offer stupid money. So good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jensen. We need to get a few more ads on the podcast, but we'll get there one yeah, day. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Sellouts. <laughs> <laughs> we're very open with our audience. We've got to do what we've got to do. You have yeah, to. Yeah. Totally agree. So you're going to be at Silverstone this weekend. I guess, are you essentially a Sky's like, expert analyst now? Is that what you That's were? what they call me, but I don't know about that. No. You know, I, I, I kind of know what I'm talking about. And then it gets too technical and I have to head it, hand it over to like Ted Kravitz <laughs> or Karun Chandok. <laughs> For some reason, Karun Chandok, I think he lives in a Formula One car. Yeah. Because uh, he knows everything. Uh, it's very impressive. But no, I definitely understand the, the, um, the mindset of a racing driver, what they're going through uh, and, and how that dynamic is with, with working with a team and the engineering mm. and the mechanics and stuff. So I love that aspect of it. And I love... Um, you know, interviewing the drivers straight after the race. I've, I've been lucky enough to do that quite a few times now. When you see that raw emotion there, yeah. before they've had time to relax and think about what they're supposed to say, mm. they say what just comes into their head. Which oh, that's I a like. good tactic, actually. You can yeah. get like some some bits out I know. Of which you wouldn't before. And also because I'm asking the question, I've raced with most of them, so they're, they're a little bit more relaxed. And then you hit them with a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it's uh, it's it's been a lot of fun. That's one That's thing great. we were thinking though, when you were racing, did you ever imagine yourself being like the presenter or then interviewing people after? Did you ever think you'd do this with your No, career? I didn't actually. Um, and to be fair, um, I didn't think I'd enjoy it. You know, I was like, why would I want to be in F1 if I'm not doing the driving part? Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I worked with a really cool group of people yeah. um, in Sky. And uh, it's, it's pushing myself to do something that I'm uncomfortable with doing, which is being in front of the camera, asking questions. I find it 10 times harder than answering them. Yeah. Um, it's, it's initially the first year I did it, I remember saying to my missus, I said, I'm doing the post race questions to the drivers, live to the world. Uh, it's not just on Sky Sports F1, that one's to the world, it's the yeah. world feed. Mm. I said, what if I mess up? She said, what if you mess up? So what's the worst that's going to happen? That's so funny like, hearing that from you, like being in a race, being a driver, trying yeah. to win, and you're getting nervous about asking questions. Well, because it's the other way around. It's, yeah. uh, you need to, you know, you need to ask the good questions um, and you, that you know you're going to get a good answer from. So my missus was just like, well, so what? She said, just, just go with it. I was mm. like, yeah, you're right, actually. What is the worst that can happen? And ever since then, I've, I've really enjoyed it. And I work with some great people. Lays and bees, good. Uh, really good and uh, when I've done commentary I've been with Croft the Croft Croftmeister, Croftmeister in, in the box yeah. um, which is, has been a lot of fun so no great group of people and um, really enjoying the, the challenge of it really it's really nice I mean there's so many they've got so many new presenters now for Sky and just F1 in general but you still need to have like the, the recognisable names and faces like I think if you got rid of Brundle it just wouldn't be F1 anymore like he, he needs to do those those grid walks yeah I can't imagine doing those grid walks 
No. I, I mean, I, I would hate getting someone's name wrong. And, and, and Martin's definitely done that. I does it so much. It's but the that's, that's the best part when about it, isn't it? To talk and they yeah. don't talk. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I think it's awesome. But yeah, he got. I think it was Venus and Serena. He got around the wrong way. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, and I think some of that might be my fault, actually. Oh but, no! Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I do love that. I love that the grid walk. But um, no, it's a it's a good group of people, and it's it's such a hectic weekend. There's so much going on at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so so much talent in the sport. So many personalities uh and f1 is in a great place as you guys guys know at the moment that's kind of what we wanted to ask wouldn't it i mean it's the sport has changed so much recently um and i guess the drivers have as well how would you compare like the sport now to how it was when you first started in like the early 2000s uh i think i think um in in europe it's probably very similar you know the sport was was very big when i got into formula one it's sort of tailed off a little bit sort of seven or eight years into my career mm. i think when michael left it left quite a big hole especially in germany mm-hmm. for yeah. the sport but um it was pretty big when i first got into the sport but it was it was very tricky to break into formula one as a youngster so mm. when i got in at 20 uh it uh it felt sh- it was a real shock to the system that i got the opportunity to race in f1 i felt it was a weird feeling going out on track behind Michael Schumacher. I bet. It's the first bet. thing, you know, how driving out. We in, need to, yeah, exactly. I need to ask how that was. Because being new fans, yeah. we, we didn't have the chance to watch all the amazing races. We, yeah. we, we know the history. We hear about it. We see the clips. Incredible. But you've shared the track with Schumacher. Yeah, I, I drove out the pits in, in Melbourne, which is the first race in FP1, first practice. Drove out on the track behind him. Um, and I remember driving out feeling pretty emotional and then you, you, you heard the big V10 engine and then the, the rooster tail of, of leaves that had fallen off the trees it turned two coming out of the back of the Ferrari I was just like wow this wow. is just nuts as That's a crazy. 20 year old kid you know think of what a 20 year old kid normally is doing yeah, when I'm yeah. racing in Formula yeah. 1 in Australia so, so no it was, a, it was a yeah it was a very special very special moment I suppose um, you have to just put all your emotions aside for that for those 50 60 laps or whatever you're doing because I think for me it would just get the better of me like yeah. if I was like oh shit yeah well it. I think is when you actually start driving you forget everything, you forget the outside world which you mm. have to otherwise yeah. there's too much going through your head you know you need to focus um, but no the difference is now um, I think you know obviously stateside the sport's really big um, everyone's got a phone everyone's got a camera on their phone so you are you're in the limelight i guess a lot more and mm. you can't really go anywhere as a racing driver and not get pictured they are like proper stars now i mean yeah. they were before anyway but yeah. now because you see them everywhere yeah we we definitely had more freedom as a driver i mean we could we could go to a nightclub and have fun mm. and not worry about getting pictured yeah we were out the other day in barcelona and there's a few there's drivers that managed couple, to sneak into the club and they were partying yeah. and it was good to see they had their own section of it you like, want to yeah, be able to see that because at the end of the day everyone's a normal person they need to relax yeah. they need to switch off yeah it, it, it is a shame i mean i was at, at goodwood the weekend and you know it's it's full of racing people and yeah. they have a black tie ball on the saturday which at my missus was there and it was it was just lovely with friends but then you're, you're a few drinks in and you're dancing on the dance floor and someone comes over and asks for a picture and yeah. i find that kind of um just uncomfortable because I'm I'm not going to look my best. Yeah, I really. <laughs> but you know, you're there with your missus and you're dancing away, you're and it just kind yourself, of breaks yeah. the moment a little bit of, yeah, of having fun. So it's it's, and I can imagine for drivers these days, it's non-stop. So yeah, but you know what? I think a lot of them have embraced it. I think um, Drive to Survive has, has, you know, changed a lot of drivers' views of. Um, having a, ta- a camera shoved in your face mm. uh, a lot of us didn't really like it before it's like I just I'm here to race you know I just want to race and I'll do that bit because it's part of the job was that your mindset yeah it was it? and I would do the best I could in front of the camera um, mm. and you know be as polite as I could but that's not the bit you love you, yeah. you love the bit um, you know the driving part of it and I yeah. think for me in my career I went through a stage which was great the first year and I trusted everyone and all the journalists and then when times get tough, they really kick you when you're down. It was like, oh, okay, I didn't didn't expect that. And they twist every single word. Oh, and man. There's only a few people like that in the sport, but it, it, it stops you from trusting anyone. And mm. I went through a period of not wanting to do any interviews and just saying the minimum I could, no emotion in it. Uh, and I, I really struggled to trust people from that point on. Mm. 
until I started sort of being competitive and winning races, then I could be like, hang on, you were that guy that yeah. said that or yeah, did that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look at me, hand. I'm winning now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I even had someone in my championship year say to me, because we had a couple of bad races, they said, do you actually want to win this championship? It's like, oh, that's a pretty crap question, first yeah, of all. Why? How did you get in here? But yeah, thanks for that voter yeah. confidence. And it's just little things like that. But I think drivers are... Um, they're, they're able to handle that a bit more now and they, they kind of have to with Drive to Survive the first season they're like I don't want to be doing this and then they see what recognition it gets it, and, and do, how yeah. big their profiles got from it mm. they're like oh okay yeah. you, know, you guys can come to my house <laughs> <laughs> like Danny Rick's like come and hang out with me on my farm and my sheep it's like really? I know uh, but it's, it's funny it's funny and then Max obviously is not into it at all but it's it's really interesting to see the different drivers personalities and also yeah, how they look at say. it and whether they look at it as just want to have a profile or some of them i'm sure look at it as possible business opportunities mm. um bigger profile bigger social media following um means more cash doesn't it really in the bank yeah. so yeah. it's interesting to see how all the different drivers are on camera and uh, and, and how they're working with it absolutely that's cool yeah i think um just from a viewer's perspective it's nice to know their personality because then they're not just like I was related back to music because I do music and like back in the day before you had like uh, social media you saw them on stage when they were playing and then that was it so they were like this godlike figure same with racing drivers I think if you grew up loving F1 they were like these untouchable guys who like you knew nothing about but now it's kind of opened it up so they're, they're like a relatable person in a way so I think it's good it's good for the sport yeah, I think it's diff it's difficult to get new fans in. I think if you <clears throat> if your if your family were into F one, you'd watch it and you'd get mm. into it. And as you said, like these superheroes driving racing cars. Um, but it was very difficult for new people to understand the sport and to get into it because they didn't have they didn't really show their personalities or weren't able to. Yeah. But with with um, <clears throat> Drive to Survive, you definitely see the behind the scenes. Um, and you know some purists will say well there's certain bits that aren't real and the tyre squeal's different and commentary is not what it actually is on the race weekend and it's not but it's entertainment and mm, yeah. and it's been so good for the sport all oh around. yeah amazing it's been for great the for the sport it's just hit the I think it's perfectly hit the audience of people that wanted to see something like that side of it like there's people who like certain things from the race like certain thick clips <laughs> highlights whatever but Drive Survive just gives you everything in one go that you want. Well, you <clears throat> you you can pick your driver, right? You can pick who. Well, that's it. You can pick who you like and their personality, and uh, and you just hope they're as good on the track as they are in their interviews and and uh, and their personality. But yeah, I think that was the the issue before is choosing a driver was very difficult. It's like, well, it's the quickest car. I want that guy to win because he's mm -hmm. in the quickest car. He's going to win. I've won. We. But um, with with you know with the way it is now, you have true personalities and you get behind that person. Um, you know, there has to be a, a balance still. You know, I love the action and I love that there's driver, drivers fighting off track and all that. But you still need the racing to be good. And you can't change that. Yeah. You, know, the, the, you know, we need to make sure that we're, we're going to race circuits that are fun for the drivers, that they get out of the car, they're, they're excited. But also tracks that are, are good for overtaking. Uh, I think it's important for us to have a real balance of these city races that we're, we're putting more and more into the calendar and the old school tracks, which yeah. the drivers love. So there's no point having great off-track action and not having on-track action. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a good balance. If you had the choice to have a season of like what Drive to Survive is for your championship winning year, would you want them to have filmed it? If, uh, if you could have had that like kind of coverage back then and they would have just filmed everything going on, caught every conversation, would you want them to have done it? There, there are two ways of looking at it. For me, I would love to have had something that I could look back at and, and look at the emotions that I went through and how tough it was and how great it was. Mm. Um, I would love to have that to show my kids. Yeah. Um, but would I, want, would I have wanted a camera over my shoulder the whole time? Yeah. No. You know, I, I think I, I struggled through that season at certain points mentally when times got tough um, and I needed the backing of the people around me which really helped uh, but you know I, I wouldn't have wanted a camera over my shoulder mm. the whole time you mm. know when I'm in the paddock now I, I even because I'm not always there I forget uh, the drive to survivor there yeah so you just got to be a little bit careful you know you don't want to be swearing all the time because you look up and it's like oh there's a, there's boom, a boom mic above my, yeah. my head and you know the you teams and the, what you say yeah the teams yeah. and the drivers they get to take bits out i think if, if they're a little <clears throat> bit aggressive whereas we don't yeah tv don't so if we say something it's in there 
<laughs> so you just got to be a little bit careful. Yeah. If, you know, if George Russell comes over and says hello, walking out or something, shaking hands with the driver, you just got to be a little bit careful because you, you pretty much know everything you say within the paddock or pit lane is being recorded. So mm. now I'm kind of kind of happy that that wasn't there, my championship winning yeah. year. It's really interesting to me what you just said about you struggling a bit with mental health during that time. Um, Cause I feel like there is a lot of that that goes on in the sport. So I'd love to hear it from your point of view. I mean, just an, as an example, I think Daniel Ricciardo could be suffering a bit of a mental game at the minute in terms of his performance or what's going on or whatever. I think it must be really hard, really stressful. What are your views on that? Totally agree. And um, you never want to show it on camera. Um, you know, Daniel's the most smiley person in the pit. Everyone lane. says that. Big they yeah. say well, he's even better off camera than yeah. he is on like. Just well, he great. is, but I mean, what's he like when he's in his room on his own? I don't know. I don't know what he's like. I mean. He, He's a good friend, um, but I still don't know what he's like when he's all, when he's sat on his own. Of course, is yeah. he is he is he truly happy with the way things are going? I'm sure he's not. But uh, uh, I I definitely went through a difficult time, and and I think as racing drivers we're too afraid to ask for help because you think of it as a weakness, and yeah. you don't want other drivers seeing your weaknesses. That's the whole point with F1, yeah. Um, especially with teammates. So. I never really asked for help oh, as, as early as I should have done. Um, my physio, who was one of my best buddies, a guy called Mikey Muscles, mm. wasn't his real name. <laughs> um, he, uh, he used to Quite massage. a small guy, was he? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, we, uh, he used to massage me before the race, or, and then we do reaction work. And He basically, he was my girlfriend. Yeah. At the time, he was with me the whole time. I spent more time with him than I did my partner at the time. <laughs> You know, I'd go everywhere with him. And if he you switched exactly. teams, did he come with you? Yeah, yeah, always travel with me. So. Oh, wow, because you switched teams quite a lot. So I did. That's so. the interesting dynamic of switching yeah. teams. Do you take the, because it's hard already. You've yeah, got to is. enter into a new group yeah. of people, you know. Yeah. It's taking like a physio and taking people Definitely. that are close to you so important. Yeah, because he knows you so well. And he, he could tell when I wasn't in a good place. And, you know, he'd be, give me a massage and he'd go, JB, talk to me. You know, just, just let it all out. And uh, he wouldn't have to say much, but... It was it was awesome just at that moment to to get my feelings out and to understand there was someone there to to you know listen to me. I didn't want to speak to other people because as I said it felt like a weakness. But he was always there for me, which which meant a lot. So yeah, I think everyone needs that. Orlando Norris has mentioned it before. Last year he mentioned that he had some mental health issues and yeah. was afraid to talk out, speak out. But he did, which is great. I think that immediately gives you strength speaking yeah. out um so it's it's really important and i think most sportsmen have someone there to help them mentally through what they're going through because it's such high pressure mm -hmm. you know i don't need someone that's been a racing driver to help me through it because i know what i'm doing in that area it's the mental side of it um that i i definitely needed help and i felt so much better as soon as as soon as i got that so great. yeah i think anyone at this at the top of their game fighting for wins there's there's a lot of pressure there so you you, you do need help from people and shouldn't be afraid to ask Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on, well, Hamilton right now. We started watching last season and our first race was Brazil. So we've just watched a Hamilton masterclass and we were like, oh my God, this guy is ridiculous. He's like, who have I got sat in front of us? Yeah, <laughs> that's genuinely we're very new. Yeah. Um, but we're going into Silverstone this weekend. From your opinion, do you think this season could turn around for Hamilton? Because we, we don't know much, but we know Mercedes are very good at getting a good car out. Yes, they are. They're very good at, at adapting to a situation and obviously they're in a bit of a hole. Um, you know, they still got the third best car on the grid. Everyone says it's a disaster, but they're still the third best yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. We, got, we can't forget there's sort of 12, 14 guys that would love to be in that car mm. right mm. now. But um, for Mercedes, yeah, it's, it's not been a good year uh, compared to the last seven, eight years. Um, so um, they, they, the problem is with the regulation change, it's not an easy fix for them because you've got this poor thing with the car. Because the lower you go with the car, the more downforce you get because it's the way the cars are designed. So there's um, ground effects. The reason for ground effects is because it doesn't affect the dirt, it doesn't affect the car behind you. So it means the cars can run closer. Okay. So a special thing, car runs really close to the ground and that, that um, creates downforce from underneath the car, not from the wings on the car. So it means that the car behind can run closer and you can have better <coughs> racing. If it's all down to the wings, to, uh, to give you the downforce for the car, it produces a lot of dirty air and the car behind can't get close to the car in front. Was that happening last year? Is that why they were having yeah. a bit of an issue last That's year? always been the issue in F1 because mm. <clears throat> you have such big wings on the cars. Um, so great idea, 
and mo and some of the teams have got it to work but the problem is for mercedes they get it low and it starts giving it the porpoising yeah and it's hurting the driver's backs <clears throat> and it's also an inconsistent downforce then um silverstone is fast corners mercedes is good in fast corners and it's very smooth we've noticed this because we've been absolutely rinsing it on the f1 game have you yeah exactly, days, yeah. Yeah. exactly the same. yeah that's um, what i was thinking <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I think the Mercedes will be competitive. I, I really hope it's a six-way fight for the win. I think mm. it can be. I think it really can be. And, you know, it won't be a consistent season for Mercedes because the rougher circuits will be difficult. Yeah. But um, some circuits will really play into their hands. Well, that's what I've heard recently <laughs> about Red Bull. Kind of their, their car is attuned more to, like, street circuits. And we've had a few of those at the start of this year. So maybe we now we're going to start to see Mercedes come back. And I don't know. Hopefully Ferrari because I'm a Ferrari fan. Yeah, it's it's a shame for Ferrari. They had such a good car at the start of the year, and they still do have, but reliability has has got them down. So, mm. you know, I think I will, all teams will take an extra engine this year, and they'll get penalised, which is normally ten places or twenty if they're changing everything. Yep. Um, so every team's going to have that. It's just Ferrari have had it really early in the season. Leclerc just changed his, I believe, the knee for the last race. Yeah, so he started yeah. last, um, finished yeah. fifth, I think. So yeah, that it's just nasty. shows you the the difference in performance of the quick <laughs> yeah. cars and the yeah. mid pack cars. The same as Lewis last year, you know, he's an exceptional talent, but if you come from last to first, there's a reason for it. You've got a yeah. really good car. Mm. It's, a, it's a team package. So, uh, no, I think, uh, I think it'd be a really, really good race this weekend. I'm excited for the fight and, uh, and also to be there to, uh, to be involved in it a bit. Who are you backing this year? For the championship, you, mm. I mean, it's, you'd have to say Red Bull and Max because they've been the most consistent. Um, I mean, they've still had their issues, reliability issues. And I think, as I said, they'll probably take an engine during this year. They'll get a 20-place grid penalty. Um, but Ferrari, f Ferrari for me, the bigger issue was it's, it's make, when they make the wrong call on strategy. Oh, like man. Monaco. <coughs> Absolutely yeah. broke, broke my like, heart. He man. had it in the bag. Yeah. Um, was that a error from what we saw? It looked like they called him in, but then didn't mean to call him in. <coughs> well, they, the problem is in that situation... <coughs> they there's no point doing something in the middle you have to either be changing tires early on or not change tires and go straight to slick tires because they went from wets to winters to yeah slicks. yeah yeah so you've either got to jump early when the driver knows it's dry enough for dries or dry enough for winters but you can't hang around for too long because if someone jumps onto another tire and it's five seconds a lot quicker they've got you um and that's that's what happens so you know they they it's like they didn't think on their feet enough. They were like, oh, we're leading. Uh, we don't know. We don't want to lose the win. We haven't yeah, been here yeah, in a while. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. What's going on? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't an easy... To be fair to them, it is a high-pressure situation. But, um, yeah, those are the sort of things they don't want to happen again because that's what's going to cost them the big Yeah, points. you've got to feel sorry for Leclerc. He's put in some amazing poles. And he's just been an amazing right driver. Really. Yeah. It's just not gone his way towards the end. Yeah, he's, he's very level-headed. And I think he's only made one mistake this year, and that was um, in Imola. When he hit hit the wall in the chicane. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. When we were there. We were there for that. That was our first Grand Prix. How was it? Yeah. And it was it was amazing to us, kind of how you feel a bit out of the loop. Like when you watch it at home on TV, you can see everything. Yeah, you know, it's everything a lot that's more going on in the track. And we're like, what is going on? There's been a crash. Like who was it? It's a Ferrari. Who? Which Ferrari driver yeah. was it? Like, yeah. They need to bring something where you've got headphones and you can hear the commentary. Yeah. Because yeah, I agree. When you're at the track, it's amazing atmosphere, but. Most of the time, it's like, oh, after lap 10, it's like, I have no idea what's going on. Do you have something? Do you have an earpiece which tells you what's going on or anything? Or if well, I'm, I'm normally, in, if I'm not commentating in the race, yeah. which, which I have done a few times, and you have all the screens, timing screens, race screens, everything. Mm. Um, if I'm not there, I'm watching on TV anyway. But I have an earpiece in so I can hear the commentary from... from commentating sports, must yeah. be one of the hardest things to do. How do you watch that and then say it so quick? It's you so much I mean? Crofty is, is I'd be watching and trying to that, take so. in yeah. a thousand things at once. Yeah, so I, I've commented on three races now, I think. Uh, loved it. And uh, Holland was a good race to commentate on. I commented on Saudi Arabia this year, which is a really good race. I love it. Um, it's so action-packed. Um, and uh, the adrenaline's so high because yeah. you know, you're mm. the closest to the action, really. You feel that you are because you're, you're talking about it and you're trying to tell yeah. the world what's going on. But you're telling the story of the race for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. They can see the race, but you watch a race and on its own. It's great and all, but when you have the commentary of but, people that are supposed to know what they're talking about, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it definitely adds to it and it, it makes it that extra bit special. Definitely. 100%. That's what helps them remember it. I completely agree. Yeah. We know you've got a very busy week because it's Silverstone, so... Thank you very much for chatting to us. We don't want to keep you too long. But I did have one last question. Okay. 
Do you ever get the urge to just want to jump in those in one of those cars now? Always. Always. Always, but I'll definitely embarrass myself with my head falling off after about three laps. Because <laughs> of the neck. Yeah, yeah. but um, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be racing in F1 again. I mean, 23 races is just nuts. Mm. It is, and I've got two kids now. Um, so it, it's not feasible for me, but I would love to drive a Formula 1 car. I miss driving a Formula 1 car, yeah. I've driven a lot of things in would my Would you life. not get a chance like on a test track or any just a zip one round for a little bit? Or There's always, it's always a possibility. And I think they wanted to do something at the start of this year with um, a few of the Sky guys driving uh, the current F1 cars. Oh wow! Which would have been nuts, especially if someone put it in the wall. That would be genius. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few drivers that have done pretty well in Formula One that work for Sky Sports F1. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, Damon Hill, he won a world championship. We Martin met, Brundle, we met Damon. Yeah, Martin didn't win a race, but he was always there or thereabouts. Um, Paul Darista, Anthony Davis, and Karun Chandok. So there's a load of them. So mm. yeah, it, it would be Herber, really fun to watch. Actually, stick us all in current cars. It'd be nuts. It I feel be like really, I know who would really probably, win. It'd probably really be expensive. Probably be you. Shh. <laughs> 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 Imagine which man. car they give me. <laughs> <laughs> a huss. <laughs> <laughs> They're quick, mate. At the moment. Yeah, they are. Thanks cool. so much for for joining us, man. It's been a pleasure. Excellent. Enjoy the weekend, guys. And you.